This is from the light experiments I did with Rod Warren. That's red laser light. That's red laser light expanding, I mean ex uh, accelerating. And the actual particle is now displaying because it is accelerating and is concussing and it's turning into plasma and then it's recombining uh, and spraying away from each other because of repulsion because they are all electrons at this point. They come in as back-to-back -back electrons. They crash in here and separate. That's what's happening. That's what light is. Back-to-back -back electrons. Now, this is the Higgs fields as they come out of here. Each electron sprays into the atmosphere and causes polarized fields to surround the particle which is a charged particle carrier they call it. This one spun backwards crashed into one of the regular light disks of Higgs and did that whatever. Now that is the particles and they are back-to-back -back electrons. An electron this way and then one up this way. So all they are is a spin direction. They're exactly the same and they spin down towards the earth. Positrons are identical, but they spin up away from the Earth. That is the difference. The Earth is a positive, attractive source. Every electron will suck to Earth. Now, this is light as it spins in a right-hand spin, drifts to the left, expanded, compressed, obviously slowing down. And this shows the spinning nature of light. It's just like a drill bit screwing through the orifice and it's a, these are it's a venturi orifice i've got all this explained a hundred times a hundred ways and probably close to a hundred videos so i'm going to leave it at that actually i really can't leave it at that a positron is an upspin and an, an electron is a downspin that's the only difference whatsoever and a plus is a positron is a plus means it goes up an electron is a negative means it goes down they both weigh this, 0.0005447 atomic mass units, identical particles, one spins away and one spins towards the Earth. Electron is a minus down, one electron volt, and so forth. 1836 bits in every single proton. It, you know, they seem to become stable at 1836, so I'll call that a proton, because they always used to call it a proton. It's not positive, it's 50-50, 918 positive, 918 negative. And when you go into the neutron, you just add one extra negative, that's all, for the neutron. So it's 918 positive, 919 negative. Hydrogen is that little tiny bitty particle right there, and it's negative. And this gigantic positive over here, this is the current model. So hydrogen would be this gigantic positive and this little tiny electron. And they're both the same charge. It's insanity. This would slam into that positive, first of all. Secondly, why would they be exactly the same charge? It's gigantic, 1,836 times as big as that. It's, it's total nonsense. Now, what it really is, is that little tiny particle is the same as all the little tiny particles that add together with all the other little tiny particles that are positive. So this is nothing more than a ball of bar magnets. It's just like this. These are little positive and negatives together. They all glue together nicely. That's called the strong nuclear force. When there's too many of them, you end up with weak nuclear forces. They don't want to stay together. They are no longer resonant frequency stable. But they are all the same particles. All right? And when you get a nuclear explosions, you might get a chunk like this. That will never stay together. It'll just keep continuing to explode and fall apart and pieces will spit out everywhere because it is not resonant stable. And if you look up salt shaker vibration uh, frequency acoustic experiment or something it'll show they the rule of eight is phenomenally expressed in these salt vibration experiments you can see rule of eight which is the atomic rule of eight surrounding a nuclear core it happens